Howdy y'all, it's Curious Raven. I am back with another spooky paranormal story. This is one story. It's kind of long. I hope y'all enjoy it. I've never posted anything on here before. And I've stopped telling people about my experiences because I had always gotten the uh-huh, changes the subject immediately, reaction. I guess I'm just not sure what to do with these experiences. I feel like they are decently significant and I can't forget them or make them stop happening. Not that I want to necessarily. It's gotten much less frequent. It's not like it really bothers me or anything. But it's such an inherent part of my daily existence. I will add, I was in a very severe car accident about 15 years ago. Pedestrian versus vehicle. And I had pretty severe head trauma amongst other bodily injuries. This incident hasn't left me with many lasting... This incident hasn't left me with many lasting side effects. Other than vertigo tinnitus, and some issues with mental focus, something I and one or two very close people to me have noticed, just because we know how mentally sharp I was before, and I can recall the paranormal events with the same clarity as before the accident, so I don't believe that has had any impact on my memories of these happenings. A little background. I am 29 female, and I grew up in a crummy little town in Northern California where I spent ages 1 to 10 years old. My parents have been divorced since before I can remember. I have no memories of them together. So I grew up floating between the two households. I live with my mom during the time when these events occurred and would see my dad every other weekend. I remember being very attached to my mom as most small children tend to be especially in split households, and I would typically end up sleeping in her bed most nights. I was probably two or three when my first stepdad came into the picture, and he of course wanted to put a stop to the bed sharing. He worked a pretty stressful job with long hours and didn't need a wiggly toddler messing with his sleep schedule, and as a parent now myself, I totally get it. I recall that I didn't take very well to it initially, I would wake up in the middle of the night to go to my mom's room, which was directly across the hall from mine, try the doorknob, and find it locked. I would just sit there and knock until either my mom came and got me, or sometimes my stepdad would tell me to go back to my own room. At one point, my stepdad sat me down and had a conversation with me about how I needed to stay in bed unless it was an emergency. We all needed to get as much sleep as we could to stay healthy and have energy to go to work and school and play, etc. So I got the hint, and eventually I was able to stay asleep through the night. And I wanted to make sure no one got sick or tired because I was waking them up in the night. So even if I did wake up, I did everything I could to fall back to sleep and stay in bed. The house we lived in had always given me some bad vibes. Even at such a young age, I could just tell that there was something wrong with it. It felt heavy inside, and just about any time I turned a corner or entered a room, it felt like there was going to be someone or something waiting for me. Having our dog Zephyr had helped a bit. He was a Rodison Ridgeback. They are a larger breed, pretty muscular, very loyal, protective, and intelligent. He slept in my room at the foot of my bed most of the time. The first encounter I experienced was when I was probably four to five years old. And at this point, I had developed a solid sleeping pattern and rarely woke up throughout the night. I remember waking up and my whole body was just wide awake. I was completely alert out of a dead sleep. I looked at my digital clock on the nightstand and I saw it was 2.14 a.m. I have no clue why I remember that exact time with such clarity. I remember just about everything about the entire scene in vivid detail, as a matter of fact. And I just kind of looked around my room wondering why I had woken up. I looked towards the foot of my bed, which was facing my open bedroom door, where I could see the small hallway and across it to my mom's closed bedroom door. 
The hallway light was on, which was normal, but nothing amiss. I saw Zephyr at the foot of my bed and noticed his ears were perked, and he was alert as well as his head lifted and focused on the hallway, but still sitting down. I suddenly had a really overpowering sense of alarm come over me. My heartbeat sped up and my breathing got shallow. I remember feeling like I needed to get out of there, out of my room, and at the very least, and not be alone. The sound was muffled at first, kind of like it was down the hallway and maybe coming from the garage, which was past the kitchen. It was a dragging sound, like something heavy wrapped in cloth being dragged across the floor. Then a heavy, dull thud, followed by a low moan as if someone were in pain. But it wasn't clear. It was like if someone had something covering their mouth. I sat there in bed, trying to understand what I was hearing. Or if I was really hearing it. When I looked back at my dog, he stood up on my bed immediately, hackles raised and growling with teeth bared toward my open door. This dog was never vocal by any means let alone aggressive, and his reaction proved to me that I was truly experiencing what I felt and heard. I sat for a few more seconds, just stunned, I think, and I couldn't hear the dragging, the thump, and the groan repeated. Now closer towards the end of the hallway, which means it had crossed through the kitchen, I threw my covers off, and ran to the doorway, where I stopped, suddenly very frozen in fear. The noises continued, seemingly unbothered by my movement, and Zephyr had jumped down from my bed but refused to move from the part of the room. I remember my heartbeat suddenly pounding in my ears as I tried to figure out how to take the three steps across the hallway to get to my mom's room without getting caught, eaten, found by whatever was coming towards me. I heard one more muffled groan and decided to shut my eyes and just run. As I stepped into the hallway, I remember it was so cold like a window had been left open, and it kind of caught my breath in my chest. I also remember having my entire body just flooded with a sense of, do not look down the hallway. And I listened to it. I opened one eye to make sure I didn't run into my mom's door. Thankfully, it was unlocked as I barreled into her room and closed it quickly, and as quietly as I could behind me. I crawled into bed next to my mom and pulled the cover over my head trying to calm myself down as best as I could. Eventually, I fell asleep and I didn't hear the noise anymore. I think it was about a week before I tried to, to try to tell anyone about that night. I think my mindset was, don't think about it or it will happen again. So I didn't really acknowledge it until I had some undivided attention from adults. It made me feel safer. It was my dad and his wife at the time who I ended up talking to about the whole thing. They brushed it off and suggested that it was a refrigerator or an ice maker. But with how my dog reacted and how very clearly I could remember it all, especially the way it made me feel, I knew it was something else. 100% had the dog by my side every night for a very long time. I started keeping my door closed or open just a crack. But as far as I can remember, that particular incident never happened again. As I grew up in that house, I still felt like there was a presence. Not necessarily malicious, but definitely nothing good. More like it wanted to keep me in a perpetual state of fear and anxiety. I continued to have that feeling of expecting to see something around each corner, which did give me horrible anxiety. In fact, I remember vividly one afternoon in my after-school program in the first grade. It felt like I was lucid dreaming, like suddenly nothing around me was real, and I couldn't wake up. I started crying and screaming and pinching my arms just to make sure I could feel it. And then another little kid went and got a teacher because he thought I had gotten stuck in the play structure I was in. Needless to say, whatever it was, it succeeded in messing with my head if that was its goal. Over the next year, my dad ended up taking Zephyr to live on the ranch he had. Zephyr was his dog to begin with. I was never quite sure why he left him with my mom in the first place. And one night, I remember not feeling well and wanting to go get my mom for some medicine. But when I opened the bedroom door, a large dark dog snout appeared out of the darkness. And then an entire canine muzzle protruded out towards me at eye level. It was a dark brown color 
long and sleek, and I could even see the shine from the wetness of the nose. No teeth spared, no noises, or anything in particular scary other than in the indication that there was suddenly a very large dog in my mom's room. I very quietly closed the door and ran back to bed, hoping that that would be the end of it for the night. And it was. My younger sister was born when I was six, and my brother when I was eight. So there were a lot of distractions over the next few years, and I didn't notice much activity. Things got really chaotic at that house. Fortunately, it developed into a pretty toxic relationship between my mom, stepdad, and me. So when I was 10 years old, I decided to go live with my dad on his ranch. I continued to feel paranoid and anxious, but I didn't have any more encounters, like at my mom's house. Later in my teenage years, I confided in my mom about the feelings of a heavy presence and very vaguely touching on that one particular encounter, and she confessed that she had always felt a presence there as well. At that point, we weren't terribly close. So I didn't press her any more on the issue, and she never brought it up again either. My next significant encounter didn't happen until I was in my early 20s. My daughter was around two and a half at the time. I remember purchased my first home. And after a year of living there, my ex-husband and I split up and had settled on me keeping the house since he didn't like the area it was in anyways. It was kind of in the mountains, and he was very much a city-like person. I loved the place. The area was great with lots of hiking and lakes nearby. A great spot for a first home and plenty opportunities to get my daughter outside. The house was a two-bedroom, two-bath, and a nice little porch on the back, and plenty of room for my daughter to grow up into. There was something off about her room in particular, though, specifically her closet. It just made me want to not be in there for too long. Honestly, I would watch it through the video monitor I had in her room sometimes when my daughter was with her dad, and I truly have expected to see something come out of it. For eyes to peer back at me, or a hand to reach around the sliding doors, but I just chalked it up to being single for the first time in almost 10 years and readjusting to being alone. And of course, my anxiety that has stuck with me since childhood. My daughter really only slept in her room. The rest of the time, I made sure to have her in the kitchen with me, playing in the living room or outside digging in the dirt, planting flowers, or something of the sort. Plus, nothing happened aside from the feeling of mine, and I tried really hard just to push it away and not let it get the better of me. One day, I was cleaning up, dusting the vents, particularly when I saw a bunch of colorful things in the vents connected to the wood-burning fireplace. I unscrewed the vents and found a ton of Lego pieces, a spoon, and a few other small plastic toy parts. I thought to myself, well, safe to say there was definitely a little kid living here at one point. As I smiled and imagined a toddler happily pushing their toys into the vent on the wall, having the time of their life, and some poor mothering wondering where the spoon went. As I scooped out more of the Legos and other junk, I found a card at the very back of the pile that turned out to be a driver's license. I cleaned it off and saw the expiration date was still a couple years away, meaning it must have been renewed fairly recently, and I decided to look up the person to see if I could return it to them. It had been about a year of me owning the house, so I figured they most likely had gotten a replacement, but I was strangely curious about this person. I thought it was a little strange, the license belonged to a younger girl according to the birth date on the card. But she didn't have any social media, nothing on LinkedIn, really no internet presence at all, which I feel is pretty rare today. The only thing I could find connected to her was an old blog post. I think it was only a couple years old at the time, and she was kind of venting online about how her family had abandoned her, and they shunned her for practicing a certain belief system and that is constantly misconstrued and sensationalized to be something that it's not. I don't want to name it here just because, based on what she said she was doing, the rituals and summoning. I don't believe she was following practices in line with this religion, and I don't feel right associating it here. I think she may have been confused herself. I will say I ended up shredding the license and never got in touch with her. 
trigger warning, this next paragraph will be about pregnancy loss. She talked about her boyfriend she lived with and the child they had and how they were very happy together and better off without her judgmental family. She went on to say that she had a miscarriage recently, decently late during pregnancy. Not sure if this was before or after she had the child that lived in the house with her. And she was very obviously grieving for a long time. In one post, she claimed to have summoned her lost child's spirit. I felt like this could have been connected to my strange feelings about my daughter's room. But I kind of felt like I was being paranoid. And once again, didn't want to let it get the best of me. I held on to this mindset until one night I woke up to my daughter crying. It was a little louder than her usual I'm awake cry. So I checked the video monitor I had on my phone. I saw her standing up holding onto the railing, the foot of her bed, looking just to the left of the monitor camera. She was crying and suddenly started screaming in a way that I had never heard before. With so much terror and fear, I watched for a second longer when she raised her arm and pointed at something, also just to the left of the monitor. I sprinted into her room, not even thinking to look at the wall near the monitor. I scooped her into my arms and asked desperately, What's wrong? Are you okay? What is it? She continued crying and her arm, still raised, pointing behind me, began raising up towards the ceiling while her eyes followed and she was able to say through tears, That, make it stop, that. I followed her direction and looked up where she was focused, but saw nothing. The room was so heavy, though, and that closet. There was such a sinister energy to it. with it. I took my daughter into my room, and she slept the rest of the night in my bed. The next day, I dropped her off with her dad for the weekend, and I immediately went and bought sage to burn. I had never done anything like that before, and tried to research as much as I could about how to be successful with it. So... I gave it my best shot. I took an Avalon shell, burned the sage, and walked through my home speaking in projective positive energy into my space and releasing any negative energies that may be stuck. I went to my daughter's room last, really wanting to take my time in there. My voice shrank a little, my hands shook a little, but I went on very intentionally. I wanted to really focus on that closet. I had to. As I continued speaking and moving closer to the closet, I pulled one of the sliding doors back so that I could get the sage inside that space. The words got stuck in my throat and my breathing stopped involuntarily. On the back of that sliding door were several strange symbols and things that looked like they might be words in a different language. And then what seemed like scribbles of nonsense... I immediately cleaned off the door as best as I could and as fast as I could and finished up the rest of the staging of the room. I wish I had taken a picture or something so I could have researched what they were. I could have also been nothing but nonsense, but I suppose it's for the best either way. After the staging, the house honestly did feel lighter. And nothing ever happened like that night again. My daughter slept much better and my mood in general seemed to improve. I ended up selling the place a couple years ago and have since moved to a different state and ever since then my life has been fairly uneventful in the paranormal area. I did seem to gain the sense of premonition almost. It started when I was around 10 to 11 and got progressively stronger with age. It's kind of cool, kind of useful, kind of a bummer sometimes. I get very clear thoughts, almost like it's spoken to me, but in my head, just like a very confidently stated fact. I can get into that in a different post, though. This has gone on for much, much longer than I anticipated. But it feels really good to be able to get out in a community where these kind of events are actually given credibility. Does anyone have any idea what could have been going on in my childhood house? I went back the first time in probably 10 plus years to get some old belongings. Mom still owns it. Younger brother sometimes stays in it. But otherwise, it is unoccupied. And that heaviness is still very much there. I was told at one point that it was a drug house right before we moved in. 
and I tried Googling the address to see if there were any reports about deaths or any particular heinous occurrences that took place, but I can't find anything. Also, any thoughts on the event in my daughter's room? I have no clue if it was directly related to that girl and something she may have tried, or if it was something else completely unrelated. I'm open to any theories or educated guesses, because I have none. Thank you so much for taking the time to read through all of this. I truly appreciate it. I rarely answer back to these, but I will say your childhood home, you might want to try saging it like you did your adult home that you lived in. Probably make a huge difference in the house. Your daughter's room, I feel like maybe that girl brought her child spirit back, but in the closet. And that's where the spirit was casted to and was held. Those markings inside the closet were probably sigils. They are a type of like spell and markings. People use them for protection or casting spells. And maybe that's how she held the ch- her, her child spirit in the closet was by those sigils. And after you marked it away and saged in there, it probably released the child spirit. And that's probably why you never had anything other, you know, happen in the house again. So I feel like you, you did the right thing. Um, I just feel like you're very sensitive to spirits. It seems like maybe you might be a medium or a psychic. I myself, I would consider a psychic because I've seen many ghosts and I've talked to many ghosts, you know, throughout my life. And I think you are kind of like me. I wish you the best of life. Those are my thoughts about it. I don't know if that helped at all. It's just some of my experiences and some things I have learned throughout the years. And I hope y'all enjoyed this story. If y'all have any advice for her, you can always leave it down below. She will be reading, so be nice. I love y'all so much. I will see y'all on Saturday for Creepy Paws Today. But until then, remember it's scary out there. Please like and subscribe. Cross.